I started writing the book really when I turned 40. Um, and when I say that, it actually took a year and a half to get the idea for the book. Uh, it's just that when I turned 40, I decided I'd always loved writing. I didn't know really how. I hadn't written fiction since college, and I, um, it was just trial and error. I was writing a lot of really bad short I didn't want to talk about inequality and otherness and race. I was writing about dog walkers to the rich or, I mean, terrible, 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 terrible stories. <laughs> for about a year and a half until I happened to read my husband's Wall Street Journal and there was a tiny article on the right hand page about an Indian surrogacy facility. So it actually does exist out there that there are places where Westerners can hire local women to carry their babies. And from there I just started, the what ifs just started. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I wasn't reading about my country um, and I wasn't hearing anything about my country outside of my home. My parents did what they could to keep us tethered to Liberian culture through foods and music. Um, and we would go visit family members in Minnesota and Memphis once a year, but otherwise I just I was hearing nothing. And so that absence after a while becomes profound because when you know the truth of, of the place that you're from, and, and especially considering the link to the United States, I just felt like this seems like an injustice, like something needs to be done. So when I became an artist, Liberia was just the first place that I went to. And I wrote the piece actually as my thesis in grad school, and I finished the first draft. It was a mess. It was like 600 pages. <laughs> and I finished that in 2009. Um, and I put it away for a few years, actually, and picked it back up in 2013. And I edited for two years or so. And it sold at the end of 2015, and it came out in 2018. So this is about a 10-year journey and to your point just being persistent and believing in something and, and it ended up working out. So I was a magazine writer um, for about a decade and then I went to grad school and while I was in grad school I took all these creative writing workshops, fiction, nonfiction, and just got a little bit more comfortable using sort of like lengthier narrative tools than I have as a magazine writer. Um, and then I almost died which was very exciting and I was very 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 sick for a long time and I noticed that like the things that I was learning from my experience and the way that people loved me when I was almost dying was, was, was so profound and so life-changing. And um, I knew that I didn't want to write a book that was like, you'll never believe what happened at the doctor. Like we, we've read those books, but I really wanted to write a book that was like, you know, this illness swept through my life. It, it, it took all of my sort of fear and anxiety and, and terror of intimacy away, and in its place came this extraordinary love from my friends. Um, but that was really hard to encapsulate, right? I didn't know how to really get there. Um, and I'd written five really unsuccessful proposals that were like, didn't make any sense, and like temporarily not contiguous. And then I thought about a friend of mine, Allison, and I was like, I just want people to hear the things that she said to me. And I wrote a chapter in an hour and a half and sent it to my agent. And she was like, this is the proposal. And we sent it out. You know, I edited it a bit. We sent it out. It sold. And that really set the tone for the rest of the book, which is this very sort of like, really like warm, intimate, close. Um, what I've heard is people feel like I'm just like sitting next to them and I'm sort of telling them a story. Um, but you know, I wrote the book that I wish I, I could have read when, when I was really sick. Um, and I just wanted to sort of give people permission to not be brave and not battle things and to just really undo that whole sort of narrative of like, but you're so strong, you'll make it. Because I really didn't think I would make it and I knew I was very strong and very smart. Um, and I just wanted to sort of explore that. You just have to keep writing that it's a craft before it's art and that it's a practice. Make friends with no. Like become mm. comfortable with rejection. Because if you don't, you risk sort of resenting this art and this industry you find yourself in. Uh, a lot of times with women, from what I heard, I read an article a, a while ago that said that we are less likely to resubmit mm -hmm. um, when we hear no, so that's from an agent, from submittable, wherever. I think the, the best advice I would give, even to my younger self, is be comfortable with rejection. Ask for help, but be really precise about what kind of help you're asking for and who you're asking for it from. I have a couple writing professors who I really, really trust, and if they say, like, listen, the storyline isn't working, I believe them. But I don't crowdsource, you know, I don't go to everybody and say, like, what do you think about this book? And trusting that, like, everybody that I ask for help has asked for help from other people, and, and we're all sort of passing it along and not being shy about saying like, hey, can you give me an hour? I think just the chance to give people sort of an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship to talk about the specific craft and art of writing. I love that the structure that Girls Right Now has set up and the sort of like really intense focus on 
mentorship and talking about writing, I mean, that is so powerful and, and so unique. It took me a long time to feel that I had a story to tell that anyone would be interested in. To give young women the, not just the skills to tell their story properly, but the belief, because it's true, that their story should be told and it's worthwhile, it is amazing.